I'm sorry, you couldn't hear me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Corona times. Yeah, so we have to wear these and I really hope that together we get over this pretty soon. This is our team, what it looks like. Um, before these times, we were already very agitated. Uh, but we were really agitated not so much about the risk of the virus, but about the beauty of sciences that we're engaged in. And these sciences, as you may have heard, um, really have been the focus of our group, QUIMP, Quantitative Imaging and Medical Physics. And you may have charted the website already, but I want to tell you a bit more about it. So the team that we put together over the last years is really a fantastic team of young talents. They originate from physics, engineering, computer sciences. And what we really do is something that we could summarize under the heading, we make every photon count. So we engage in hybrid imaging. We primarily engage in quantification. So we want to make sure that the information we derive from hybrid imaging is quantitative, it's reproducible. We would like to source information from multiple imaging parameters, which naturally would be provided by hybrid imaging. We also engage in radiomics and AI, which lately, at least in the field of nuclear medicine, has come into the focus of attention. But all this boils down to one concept that together with the clinical partners, we have defined as our research traje trajectory, and that's applied systems biology. And what this really means is denoted by this <clears throat> mock-up figure that you can see here. We understand the human being or a living organism as a concatenation, as an interplay of multiple organs, multiple systems, signaling pathways, metabolic pathways, and all this is illustrated in these graphs with a couple of dots. So we actually think that by merging what used to be formerly autonomous research fields, ways of probing biomarkers, ways of analyzing blood or imaging or other parameters, that by pooling all this and enabling um, the joint analysis of this through the use, for example, of AI technologies, we source more information. We would like to use imaging physics as one means of several to better understand the interplay of organs in the human body because we understand from talking to our clinical partners that it is this interplay that manifests diseases. You could step one way further and say this network approach to medicine encompassing imaging and non-imaging data is really a very cross-specialty approach to understanding diseases and diseases can be understood as little perturbations of a normal interaction between organs and these pathways. So you could check out this recent editorial that describes this a bit better, but our group really understands itself as a team of uh, researchers and applied clinical researchers who support these enabling technologies, be it through dynamic whole body PET or be it through the use of AI technologies. And in order to adopt these challenges from the clinical research partners and also organize our group better, we have restructured our team into three pillars, which we now source the projects under and which help us to become more effective and address these needs when they arise. The first pillar is hybrid imaging technologies. This brings together people who engage in the instrumentation aspects of hybrid imaging. They make sure that we um, have a very high quality of the imaging protocols and that whatever is thrown out as an image or as a series of images to us is of the highest quality and can be fed into subsequent analysis. This entails, of course, quality control procedures. The second aspect and domain that we build and that we would like to address is data analytics pipeline. We really want to make sure that when we get hybrid image data, we don't do a lumpology, meaning we don't help doctors look for a particular lesion only, but we actually source information that is voxel-based and that extends not only across the spatial but also a longitudinal domain. So we really want to do multi-parametric image analysis and in order for this to be adopted by the clinical partners, it has to be automated. So we have to think in terms of pipelines and ultimately whatever pipeline we develop and we think is interesting to the field and the community should be made open access. So this is another pillar of our group and uh, if you check out our web webpage, you might be guided to the subsequent software tools that we provide. And the third pillar, and I'm sure this can be expanded at the moment, is the pillar of AI and clinical decision support. And lately, uh, through an internal grant, 
that was won by the PI of this pillar, Laszlo Papp. We also now venture into the field of quantum computing, which we expect a, as a, a sort of catalyst moment to even uh, more efficiently and faster extract data through the use of AI technologies. What is important about this graph that you see behind me is that we will not only focus on image data, but through our partners in the medical university, we will prepare ourselves for using non-imaging data such as blood analysis or clinical parameters. So all this is a way of structuring a team. We are not sure if it's the best way at the moment, but it resonates with the talents and with the aspirations of our team members. And I believe together with our clinical partner, we really can trot down this path of applied systems biology and thus really contribute to applying sciences to the better of human beings. So I hope you check out our webpage or even become a follower of our LinkedIn profile. Thanks very much and all the best.